Welcome to my video tutorial on trigonometric identities. This is a topic that students struggle with. Let's see why. Here's why. You're presented with this list of trigonometric identities and expected to memorize them. I think what makes this difficult is that students often don't understand what these identities mean. So I propose that by taking time to explore each identity and see what it means and to recognize that there's often some underlying physical phenomenon that's being described will make this an easier topic, in fact a fun topic to learn. So let's get started. I'd like to begin with an example of an identity which says the sine squared of x is equivalent or identical to one-half minus one-half cosine of 2x. What does this mean? Well, if we look at the graph of the sine squared function, we see two things. The sine function is here in blue. Our sine squared function, we notice, has a average value now of about one half. And we notice a second thing, that the frequency appears to be twice the frequency of the original sine wave. And that, indeed, is what the identity is telling us. It's saying that sine squared of x has a constant term of one half and has a frequency that is double the frequency of the input. Some preliminaries we have to look at before proceeding to trigonometric identities are we want to define the radian as a measure for angles. We want to look at the definition of trigonometric functions using the unit circle. And finally, we want to look at sinusoids as functions of time and explain the difference in cyclic and radian frequency. An angle theta has a measure of one radian if the subtended arc has a length that's equal to the radius of the circle. So one radian is approximately 57.3 degrees. Notice we can define theta in terms of the arc length and radius this way. If the arc length is an entire revolution, or 360 degrees, s will be 2 pi r, the circumference of the circle. So the corresponding angle would be 2 pi r over r, or 2 pi radians. And this gives us the equality that 2 pi radians is the same as 360 degrees. And thus we have this familiar conversion factor that we use, pi radians, over 180 degrees to convert between radians and degrees. For example, these common angles here, 30 degrees is equivalent to pi over 6 radians. 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians, etc. We are assuming that you are familiar with the definition of the trigonometric functions using a right triangle. For example, where the sine of theta is defined as the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. We define the trigonometric functions using a unit circle as follows. First, we might mention that a unit circle, one whose radius is 1, that there's this relationship between an arc length and the angle theta. Since the radius is equal to 1, s will be identical in measure to theta. Now, the advantage of defining trigonometric functions using a unit circle is that now we can consider the domain of these functions to be real numbers, not just angles. Notice how we do this. So we define the sine of t, where t is a real number, as follows. We start at this point on the unit circle, 1, 0, and we travel a distance, t, an arc length of t, and we land on this point here, p. The y-coordinate of that point is defined as the sine of t. The x-coordinate will give us 
the cosine of t. And notice, since it's a unit circle, t and theta have the same measure, so sine of t, sine of theta is equal to y. Now let's consider this animation and see how the sine function behaves for different values of t. As we notice, for different values of t, which produce an arc length, they define a unique point. And the y coordinate of that point is defined as the sine of t. So we notice that when t is equal to 0, the sine of 0 is 0. And as t increases, paying attention to the y coordinate now, we see the sine for these various values. The sine function reaches its maximum when t is about pi over 2, or exactly pi over 2, and at that point the sine is equal to 1. The value of sine decreases here and becomes 0 again at t equal to pi. And now in this quadrant, the sine function is taking on negative values. So for example, at t equal to 0.73, we have the sine of t is 0.66. Let's confirm that with our calculator. So sine of 0.73 is equal to 0.66. In this next animation, we demonstrate how the motion of a point, circular motion of a point that is, will sweep out the familiar sine wave. As t varies from 0 to 2 pi, we see that a complete cycle of the sine wave is produced. Now the frequency of this waveform is represented by the letter f and is given in cycles per second. The angular frequency is represented by the Greek letter omega, and that's in units of radians per second. So indeed, as the point sweeps through an arc length, an angle is swept out. The period of the oscillation is the time to complete a single cycle. So the period is in units of seconds per cycle, meaning it would be the reciprocal of the frequency. Now we can define the sinusoid as a mathematical function of t that describes a smooth periodic oscillation. The general format for a sinusoid is given here, where a is the amplitude. The coefficient of t is omega, the angular frequency. And here, theta is our phase shift. The relationship between the angular frequency and the cyclic frequency is given here. Notice the derivation of this. There are 2 pi radians per cycle. If you multiply that by the number of cycles per second, which is f, that leaves you with radians per second, which is omega. Frequency can also be expressed as omega over 2 pi. The period is 1 over the frequency, so it can be expressed in terms of omega as 2 pi over omega. Here are some examples of some sinusoids. For example, 2 cosine t has an amplitude of 2. Omega we see is 1. So the period of this function is 2 pi. Frequency is the reciprocal of that. Phase shift would be 0. In this next example, omega is equal to 4. So the period 2 pi over 4 would give you a period of pi over 2. And notice there's a phase shift. This final example is important as we notice how omega is written. We have it written out as 2 pi times 100. So omega is 200 pi. But we can look at it, and by writing omega this way, we can see by inspection what f is. f for this sinusoid is 100 hertz. And the period being the reciprocal of that is 0.01 or 10 milliseconds.
Finally, I want to say something about sound. Sound is caused by some form of vibration, and if the vibration is sinusoidal in the audible range, then it will be perceived as a tone. For example, a frequency of 440 hertz corresponds to the A note above middle C on the piano. Thus, the A note has this representation. We see here omega 2 pi 440 times T, so the frequency is 440. Let's see what that tone sounds like. Now, we are ready to go and look at trigonometric identities. And this background will hopefully help us to understand the meaning of many of these identities.